The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 6, verses 7 to 13. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for their journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We shift our reflections in the first reading to the first book of Kings. And now we hear the end of David's life as he hands over the kingship to his son Solomon, the second son that he had by Bathsheba after she had become his wife. Ang ating mga pagbasas ngayon ay uh, tungkol sa huling habili ni Haring David bago siya mamatay. Moses, Joshua, and Samuel as representatives of God's rule over his people had all given final instructions and admonitions before they, they died. David is now going to die and exhorts his son to be courageous. Maraming mga habilin si Haring David. Hindi lang natin narinig sa unang pagbasa yung mga negative instructions. Dahil ito yung kultura nila noon. Ang isa sa mga negatibong habilin ay maghiganti sa mga personal na kaaway ni Haring David. Yung kanyang anak dapat ang maghihiganti. Kultura ito noon. Old Testament spirituality, ika nga. At isa sa mga personal na kaaway ni Haring David na binilin kay Solomon ay si Joab, isa sa kanya mga chief generals na nagtaksil sa kanya at marami pang iba. On the positive side, Solomon is told to observe what the Lord his God requires, to walk in the Lord's ways. And finally, there is a prayer for success in all his undertakings. In the Old Testament, David stands out as a remarkable and great man. But he was also a man of glaring and remarkable faults and failures. He was also a man of deep religious conviction and a man of great integrity. Kapag siya ay bumabagsak sa kasalanan at talagang Bagsak sa kasalanan. He was the first to acknowledge his faults and express repentance for his sin. In consequence, he experienced God's mercy and forgiveness. Maaari tayong matuto sa kanyang magandang halimbawa. Hindi yung magkakasala, kundi yung pag-amin sa kasalanan at pagbabalik loob sa Diyos na mapagpatawad. 
Our patron saint for today is Saint Blaise. Let us ask the intercession of Saint Blaise na sana naway katulad ni Haring David ay maging instrumento rin tayo ng pagpapatawad at hindi ng paghihiganti. Laos na at hindi na dapat ginagawa yung negatibong habilin ni Haring David kay Solomon na pag namatay ang isang tao, yung anak ang magpapatuloy ng paghihiganti. That will be a never-ending cycle of revenge. Jesus, tinuldukan ni Jesus itong Old Testament spirituality with a spirituality of forgiveness. Legend has it that hunters were assigned to look for Saint Blaise and bring him to prison. May isang ina na may anak na natinik. Kayo ba ay naranasan niyo bang natinik? Gano'ng kalaki yung tinik na naranasan niyo? Ganyang kalaki dito. So, nilapit nung ina yung kanyang anak kay Saint Blaise. At Blaise says command the child was able to cough up the bone. Napagaling ni Saint Blaise yung bata na natinik at dahil dyan siguro, St. Blaise ang naging patron saint ng mga may throat ailments. The governor of Cappadocia tried to persuade Blaise to sacrifice to pagan idols. The first time Blaise refused, binugbog siya. The next time, binitin siya sa isang puno at yung kanyang katawan ay para bang alam niyo ba yung iron combs or rakes he was suspended from a tree and his flesh was torn with iron combs and rakes finally he was beheaded in the memorial of saint blaise it has been a traditional practice to have the blessing of throats using two candles Naalala nyo nung araw, nung pre-pandemic, lumalapit kayo, di ba? Kaya lang dahil sa current health and safety protocols, hindi natin gagawin yan na lalapit kayo. Ang gagawin na lang natin ay tatayo tayo after the homily at uh, through the intercession of St. Blaise, the presider will raise his hands and pray over all of us. Pero mag, maglalagay tayo ng konting uh, modifications din para mas medyo feel natin. When we stand after the homily, we will place our left hand on our throats and then we will raise our right hand para matanggap natin yung mga blessings and the healing of the throat to the intercession of Saint Blaise. It is the Lord who heals us. Saint Blaise, Saint Padre Pio are just instruments of the healing grace and love of Jesus. At ganun din naman ang nangyayari kapag may healing mass. We just open uh, the hearts of our faith so that we will receive healing. Marami tayong mga throat ailments katulad ng goiter, thyroid problems, sore throat, yung mga usual uh, symptoms of COVID nagsisimula sa throat yan. Kaya siguro hindi pinayagan yung paglapit ninyo dahil baka mamaya ay uh, pag dumikit yung throat nyo rito, mahawa yung iba. So we will just uh, modify our prayer through the intercession of Saint Place. Let us all stand. Ang sabi dito, wag da na uh, gamitin ito. Pero dapat kasi tayo, sino sa inyo ang mga visual people? Yung 
kailangan may symbols. So as I raise this uh, candle in the form of a cross, let us place our left hand on our throats and let us raise our right hands as we pray. Through the intercession of Saint Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for the prayers of the faithful. <laughs> 